5.3, adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. Like I always say, foil or fail. So let's start off by just adding these polynomials. So this is no different than anything you've done before. You add like terms. So here are my cubes. Then I have my squared terms. Then I have my x terms. And I have my constants. And so first we'll do the red ones. So I have 4x cubes and negative 5x cubed. So that leaves me with negative 1x cubed. And then 4 minus 2 is just plus 2x squared. Minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7x. Plus 10 minus 4 is plus 6. And that's about all I have to do there. So this next example asks me to subtract the polynomials, subtract this from this. So let's first think what this problem is asking me to do. If I said subtract 3 from 8, what would you do? You would subtract 3 from 8, right? So I always like to think simple terms first, and then let's think what I'm doing here. So subtract this from this. So that means that the order I'm doing it in is this one on the right minus this one. And make sure that you put this one in parentheses because it's the whole thing. You've got to be really careful with parentheses when you're subtracting because you need to make sure that you distribute this negative. And so in our next step, I'm just going to distribute that negative out. And I like to do that to make sure I don't make any mistakes. I really advise that you do write this step here and don't just keep it in your head because that's how you make careless mistakes. So a negative times a negative is a positive. And then negative 6x squared minus 9x plus 3. And now I'm going to combine like terms. So 3 plus 4 is 7x cubed. And then I have my x squared. So 4 minus 6 of them is minus 2x squared. And then x's. 7 minus 9 is minus 2x. And then finally, we have just our constant term. So 12 plus 3 is 15. And that's that answer. Multiply the polynomials. So we need to have this quantity times this quantity. And so, of course, I have to use the distributive property here. So that means I first have to take the 3x squared and distribute it to both terms. Then I'm going to go ahead and take this 3x and distribute it. And finally, I need to take the 5 and distribute it to both terms. And so 3x squared times 2x is 6x cubed because x squared times x is x cubed. And then 3x squared times 3 is plus 9x squared. Now I'm going to distribute the 3x. So I'm going to do that in green. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. And then 3x times 3 is plus 9x. And then the last part, I'm going to distribute that 5 out. So I'll do that in blue. 5 times 2x is 10x plus 15. Now I'll go ahead and just combine like terms. So I only have that 6x cubed. And then for the squares, I have there and there. So that's plus 15x squared. And then let's see, I have x's here and here. So that's plus 19x. And then I only have 15 as my constant term. And that's about it for that one. Now I have three polynomials to multiply together. x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 2. So what I'm going to do is I have to FOIL two of them, and then I FOIL the last one in. You can do this in whatever order you want. I'm going to let this x minus 1 hang out for a moment, and I'm going to go ahead and FOIL these two first. Again, the order doesn't matter here. It's multiplication. So I'll FOIL that part, x squared. 
The outer is plus 2x minus x for the inner, so that just leaves me with plus x. And the last is minus 2. So now I'll go ahead and I will distribute that x as my first step. So I get x cubed plus x squared minus 2x. And then I need to distribute the negative 1 to each of these terms. So I get minus x squared minus x plus 2. And then I'll go ahead and combine like terms. So I have x cubed. And then I have x squared minus x squared. Those go away. And then I have minus 2x minus x is minus 3x. And then I have plus 2 as my constant. And that's that one. So before I introduce the special product patterns and make you memorize these formulas, which can always be worked out, of course, I'm going to very briefly introduce you to Pascal's triangle, and that will give you a basis for how to remember these things. So I don't know if you've ever seen Pascal's triangle before. Again, I'm going to do the real brief version here. But basically, it starts with, in the first row, there's a 1. And in the second row, there's a 1 and a 1. And then the third row is a 1, 2, 1. And that 2 is made by adding the 1 and the 1. Now, in this next row, when I go to make the next row, I'm going to add these two, and I'm going to add these two together, and I'm still going to put my 1s on the end. And so what I mean by that is I have a 3 here, I have a 3 here, and I always have the 1s on my end. And so my next row, I would go about building it by going like this and this is 4. Now I have another number here, so 3 and 3 is 6. And then I have another 4. And then I always put my 1s on the end. And I did that in the wrong color, so I'm going to just change it. And then I bet you can guess the next row. That's 5. That's 10. That's 10. That's 5 and then you have the ones on the end. So let me just change that color again. And so obviously you're seeing symmetry here and there's a whole bunch more and I'm not gonna talk about it all today. So how does that relate to all of this? All right, look at this. If I have a plus b to the zero power, well, anything to the zero power is one. So there's my answer right there. The next line is the answer to a plus b to the first power. All of my coefficients are lying over here. Well, anything to the first power is just itself. So the answer is just a plus b. And so the coefficients are 1 and 1. And then we know a plus b squared already. If you had a plus b times a plus b, that would be a squared. The outer is ab. The inner is also ab. So you have plus 2ab plus b squared. And now look over here. You have the 1, 2, 1. Those are the coefficients. So you might be asking yourself, how do you know there's the a's and the b's? Let me get through all the patterns and you'll see what I mean. And this next one's going to be our answer to a plus b cubed. And we haven't actually seen that one before. But the answer is laying right here. So let's just write our coefficients first. They're going to be 1, and then there's going to be the 3, and then there's going to be the 3, and then there's going to be another 1. So the highest power of a and the highest power of b is going to be cubed. Okay, so you start here, and for the a's, you just go down. So a cubed, a squared, a, and then you don't have any a's because a to the 0 is just just one. And then you do the same thing with the b. So you don't have it here, but then you build the b. So b, b squared, b cubed. And so this one would be what a plus b to the fourth is. Okay, let's start by writing our coefficients. So 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And so we'll start with our highest power is the fourth power, so a to the fourth, and there's no b there. So I'm just going to write in the a's first. So then cubed, then squared, then just a, then nothing, and then nothing, and then b, start with b, build up the b's, b squared, b cubed, b to the fourth. And I bet you could fill in that last one. Why don't you guys do that, and I'll check that on your PowerPoint when you come to class. 
So then I have the cubed formula here is just that a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. I just took that from right here. You might be wondering, well, what if it has a negative sign? Well, instead of having your b, you'll just call it negative b. So we'll do a squared plus 2a negative b plus negative b squared. In other words, a squared minus 2ab, and then negative b times negative b is plus b squared. And the same thing goes here. So you would have a cubed plus 3a squared negative b plus 3a negative b squared plus negative b cubed. And so you get a cubed minus 3a squared b. And then negative b squared is positive b. So this is plus 3ab squared. And then negative b cubed is negative b cubed, right? Because negative b times negative b times negative b is going to be a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative, and then b times b times b is b cubed. All right, and you might realize here that the signs, if it's a minus one, alternate. So it's plus, minus, plus. On this one, it's plus, minus, plus, minus, and that always happens too, and the reason is well, we just kind of proved it. And so here I just have all of your special formulas listed here. So for our last example, let's just go ahead and multiply these. So just FOIL, 5y times 5y is 25y squared. The outer and the inner are the same exact thing on this one. You see you have plus 15y, minus 15y, so those cancel, minus, 3 times 3 is 9. And so that's my answer to that one. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I apply that the fact that a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. In this case, my 4a is the a that I saw here. And my 7 is the b that I saw in this example. And so this is going to be a squared, 4a squared, plus 2ab plus b squared. So that's 16a squared plus 2 times 4 is 8 times 7 is 56a plus 7 squared is 49. And if you're asking yourself, well, couldn't I just have written this as two binomials and then foiled? Yeah, it's the same thing. And for the last one, if I was just thinking of the formula, this is a and this is b. And a minus b squared is just the same thing except change that sign. And so we get mn, and it's very important that I put these parentheses here because I need the mn, the whole thing squared. And remember, that's going to be m squared n squared. So those parentheses are crucial. So a squared minus 2ab, and b is just 6 in this case. If I wanted to use a negative 6, then I would have used this formula. So if I'm doing the difference, this is my a, and this positive number is my b. Okay, don't mess that up. Plus b squared, which is just 6 squared. And so I have minus 12 mn plus 6 squared, which is 36. And that's it. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.